this painting platinum. Um, I think number 57. I'm not sure. It's been a while. So it's 56. It's painting platinum number 56. So um, today uh, I first wanted to show you a new wet palette or um, uh, what would the word be? The really starting early with the word finding um, impromptu wet palette. So somebody on the Reaper Miniatures Facebook group was talking about wanting a wet palette and somebody posted a link to these mask holders cases. So, sorry, and I spilled some water on my little surface here. But um, so I got a couple of these came in a pack. Let me see if I can open it. Okay, it's two. Um, but it's a mask holder. And then I have my sponge, which, uh, what are they called? Uh, a magic Swedish cloth. And it's just sponge paper and I'm not sure it's got the exact same texture as the wet palette I used to use that I found in the studio so I don't know if it's exactly the same but uh, I mean I mean to say I think it's exactly the same I don't know if that's because somebody bought it just as sponges or, or what the deal is but it always worked really well for me so I imagine this will be exactly the same then I rated the supplies of paint club because i finally ran out of my pre-cut parchment paper um that's something about the pre-cut parchment paper that's in a box is you're gonna pull it out and do whatever and then eventually i mean i'm sure it's the same with the roll but you'll run out and it'll be a surprise so yes it is a uh, much much more valuable than magic beans i think i uh, depends on what the magic beans do so there is that i might have put too much water on this oh no and i forgot paper towels so i think i'm going to use magic cloth as a paper towel i think it, this is going to be an all magic cloth episode so today my plan is to try and speed paint something um Yes. And then not only that, but I'm going to be streaming on Saturdays, uh, starting this Saturday, which is really exciting. So you get me twice in a week. Um, the bad news is we won't have Justin, at least not regularly. He might hop into chat, whatever, whatever. But this is just going to be a lot easier for the department. And um, just as far as overseeing things, that type of situation uh so i'll get to be a little bit more focused i can come in and uh, get stuff ready saturday morning and be really focused without catastrophes because nothing will be running um i can have my nails done and not mess them up before the show starts so that'll be good all right so my plan today is to do all rve colors i'm using an rve mini that has this type of base that goes in, it goes into a base I don't remember what they call that uh, but so I'm gonna like stick that in here so um so yeah um couple things slotted perfect so I am going to prime this. It's Bones USA. I don't know that you have to prime it, but I'm going to prime it. Um, I'm going to look at it. I don't see... I don't see much in the way of kind of imperfection. I see a little something right there. Mm. Well, I'll see it when I get primer on it. I know that. Hi, Francis. Um... Hi, Shan Loki, Kiro Nico. I know it, I Fi Paint. So I forgot last week what happened. It was totally my fault. I forgot a cable that I needed and I had to run home and get it. And by the time I got home and got back, it was Reaper Live time. Um, so there was that. I don't remember what else. I mean, I've skipped, I've, I've missed an episode because of the ice. I've missed an episode to get my vaccine. Uh, yeah, we do keep missing each other. I find paints. So, 
Um, today I'm going to use a primer, but I made a violet primer or I don't know what you would call it. Like lavender, probably not lavender, lilac maybe. So, um, sorry, it's like super ASMR, but what I would recommend if you wanted to try it would be the clear purple and clear purple and maybe a little clear magenta. So I did that because I'm doing this swatch project and I'm trying to figure out how to get the paper not only to a good um, texture, but also a nice, even neutral color. And at least in hair, when you have something that's kind of yellowed or kind of off white and you want to make it white, 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 you use a little purple. Uh, spoons, I want to pretend that I finished the Sophie, but I did not. I got bored. So, oh, uh, thanks, Francis. I don't know what I did with my brush. I just had the, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I just don't know where the container that I have my brushes in is. Okay. So anyway, from what I've read on the life cycle of a brush, a lot of people don't prime or dry brush or use metallics in new brushes. So um, I'm going to use kind of an older brush, but I really like these. It's obviously like well loved. It's the... Uh, Pro Paint propaining sable no propaint sable reaper propaint sable in number two round i think but i really really love it because and this is something i get from Anne, when i swatch on the wings to test for matteness that it's really long so paint doesn't get in the ferrule and it holds a lot of paint so i really really like that but i'm gonna use the old one thank you striding aragorn um I'm going to use the old one to prime. So starting, oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of paint and it's bright. Maybe it'll adjust. I know what I'll do. Hold on. I'm just too bright on this. Did I turn that off? No, it's just dim. Maybe if I, and then turn back up. Okay. So starting Saturday, I wanna use the Pathfinder paints. We've had them around for a while. So you might remember when we first released them or having used them since then but we have the Pathfinder set and we just don't talk about it that much, but there's some really killer colors in there, especially in the way of pinks. I always hear people and I forget to tell, uh, I always hear people talk about pinks. They need more pinks. We don't make enough pinks, whatever, whatever. Um, Pathfinder has some really nice pinks and they're a little bit different from the pinks we usually do. So that's, really cool. So anyway, um, I'm pleasantly surprised with this. So like, I don't think this purple primer thing would serve much of a purpose on minis. Uh, it's not the same as I, I have a white, white paint that I use because when I swatch the paint for madness in between layers, I use really, really bright, high coverage white because I just wanted to cover up what I had on there last. But with this, I mean, I don't know that it really matters. It is very, it, it is pigmented. Oh, cool. I Fi Paint says, um, on the stream this morning, Anne was joking that she has a new brown triad that she needs to send you the swatches and say, make these, please. I would love that. Um... Oh, thanks, Spoon. Spoon says um, they've been using a lot of pinks lately because of me. So for Valentine's Day, we did not make the heartthrob pink, 
but we released my wall color blush, which is three colors. And we also released um, as a sample, I think I called it Millennial Sparkle. Um, I think it was that one. And then there was a, a hot pink oops. So, uh, so that's what we did instead of no, okay, so the paint I'm using, and you probably can't tell. Maybe you can tell in this. Okay, you can. It's kind of purple. It's just really, really, really cool. Oh, and the Barbara pink. Um, well, I'm glad you found it. So I think the Pathfinder n people knew what colors they wanted. I, I think was the deal with that. So Pathfinder was just before... Mm, this sticky tack's not going to work. I really need a base. Hey, Justin. Yes, ma'am. Um, I need a round base. Is there anybody you can think? Uh, is Collins here? Uh, I don't know. I think I hear Ed talking. You, if you hear Ed, you can ask Ed. Ed should be able to grab it for you. I'm busy. Oh, sorry. I'm off camera. I'm trying to speed paint, Justin. Can you text him? Text Ed? Yes. Text yeah. anybody. Text anybody that I need a, please, that I need a round base. You said you just need a round base? Mm-hmm. The the ones for um I don't know. I think it's a round base I need. Is it, or is it a square base? I don't even know anymore. Oh, okay. Zero Zero says and said Paizo sent Pantone color swatches that they wanted, yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is um no, no root turkey slotted. Uh, yes, this is a Arcos. Arco? Arcos? Ed's a secret fan. He's a silent watcher. JK, he's busy. I think they have some in the internet. I hate to have people run around, but I also really want to get this done so we can start on Pathfinder because it's something. Let's say you can, Ed's not responding. Um, you, you could just step away for just a second. All right. That'll give this a moment to dry. Uh, I've got to find my mask. I like whipped it off and shot it across the room. I'm about to make a base. Why don't I have a base? Oh, a binder clip. Um, let's see. I don't know how to do uh, marbles, or I would. Let's see. Ah, okay. So Pantone has these swatch books, and I think they have kind of formulas, kind of sort of formulas. I don't know because I don't know how to read them. But Pantone is expressed in terms of dyes for printing. This isn't my field. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Um, mm, 
we'll figure something out. It's still drying right now, so it's not really imperative. But I'll see what I can do. I don't think I have a binder clip either. We'll figure it out. I'm not I'm not too concerned about it. I should have thought about I mean I did think about it last week, but I didn't get it all set up. And last week was so stressful. I could not believe that happened. But it's all part of kind of doing everything in the office uh, by myself is it kind of uh, lives and dies based on how prepared I am personally. There's a lot of responsibility and, and responsibility for somebody like Ann or Josh or um, Proctor, right? Doesn't Proctor stream from home? Um, that that comes about when you when you're remote I don't like the way that that kind of I don't know maybe that's normal hi Valander uh, I don't know uh, if anybody else knows uh, let Francis know how you keep minis in the slotted bases okay so let's kind of look at what we have here. So, um, it's hard for me to see today. Maybe I just need to pull that up bigger. I think my monitor is further away than it usually is. So, got some pants, I'm assuming are kind of like cargo pants, uh, boots, See if I can't keep it in focus and I'm trying to see if the boots okay boots are kind of tucked into pants we got a little spot that came off of the shovel so the shovel I was thinking I don't know so this is sort of sci-fi and not set in on earth so I was kind of thinking like maybe the shovel could be a different metal. I don't know if I put that metallic I was thinking of in here. Um, but we want to use something kind of maybe like a deep leather color for this little pouch. And it looks like there's another pouch for tools. Boots. I think these are like steel toed. We've got skin. We've got eyes we've got hair so this hair texture is really interesting I'm actually thinking I didn't notice it before but I think it's locks like um, twisted okay So this is the worst prepped mini ever, and I know that because there's no, like, there's no prep. But you'll forgive me. I hope. Maybe we should try and make a deep, cool skin tone. I just don't want to do a bad job of it. And I don't know if I, I think I have everything I need. Uh, my plan was to just use all RVE colors. I bet I could. I'm probably going to have to think too much to finish today. I really I really fantasized and I thought, I bet if I really, really focus, I can finish today. Um, was there not a white in this? I guess we didn't have a white in the RBE. We have a gray. Oh, we have a light gray. Okay, well, this will be our white today.
which kind of sucks because I wanted to do a deep winter. We'll cheat a little bit because there's no white. We need a white. Um, if I'm doing a deep winter, that means I want cool and high contrast. So, so I was going to... Uh, I was going to do a soft summer color palette, but then I realized like this, um, this person is going to be out in the sun and, and doing archeological work and you'd get tan. Okay, good. So we have some, we have some tips on getting a mini to stick in the base. Awesome. So let's grab what I might do. Okay, so thinking back, and this is just from memory, in the Learn to Paint kits, Rhonda suggested, oh, um, I think it was bleached linen. You'd take like, you'd take bleached linen and... ebony flesh maybe and make a off-white and then kind of a a, a wash of off-white with that um, ebony flesh to make like a deeper sort of um, darker off-white and you would make a big swipe across the eyes and then take the bleach linen and do another swipe across the eyes and then do the pupils so we're going to do something along that. And because I have kind of a gray color, uh, that's going to be my, that's going to be my white. I don't think I want bright, bright white anyway, but I knew I wanted brighter than gray. I might as well use a brine wind color. So I could be wrong, but I heard that the brine wind packaging was expected soon. Um need to stop with the ums but I had talked about how I expected us to sell these fast palettes by themselves not in the box I still expect us to do that but I don't expect it to happen anytime soon soon I think it'll be more like what's going on with Brian Wind in that it will be released eventually uh, not anytime soon and it's based on packaging so we don't have the fast palette packaging I think we had 500. I'm not sure about that. But um, expect those in the distant future. Which I feel bad about because I, I was expecting them to come out sooner than that. I just wasn't thinking kind of the way everything's sort of been unprecedented. Any chance plasma colors get released sooner? I would think so. I don't know, though. I should check on that. The plasma colors are really neat because you can mix them and create some really pretty colors. They're very, um, they're very bright. So I would call them a not clear bright. Oh, oh, oh okay. Um, don't ever try to unclog your dropper tips by just squeezing the bottle. Don't do that. We've all done it at least once. This is my second RIP. Hate that. Hate that. Hate that. But whatever. I've got plenty now. Uh, this is Skull and Crossbones. This is an off-white that's sort of... Okay, so I made it toward green, I think, as an off-white. I think it would be a nice a nice addition to a platinum hair color. Hmm. Spoons, I mean... It's something you could do. I don't know if I would glue it on because a lot of people will 
clear it out, they'll take it off and clear it out and put it back on. I just, because I have access to the supplies, I'll just take it off and add a new nipple if it's really, if it's really old. Okay, glasses, glasses time. Fine detail. I'm gonna have to move this to where you can see it. The one thing I will say about this sort of violet toned primer is that when I put my white, my off white on the mini, I can definitely see where I've gotten that and where I haven't. Sort of looks, I can't tell if this Minnie's mouth is open. No, I think she just has big pretty lips. He or she, I don't really know that. Um... Oh, it's she. Or he with good chest. I don't know. Whatever you want. Ooh, Nomad Zeke, Walk Between Rains. Thanks, Dr. Bob. Um, hi, MG Photo. Thank you. I don't know what we're giving away today. We're going to have another mystery, another mystery um, giveaway. Last time I used a never-before-released copper, so maybe I'll do that again. I think it was a brass color, or meant to be a brass color. All right, so then I will use, I'm trying to think, this is not going to be a speed paint. Ed used to talk about this guy that used to work here and he said, that guy really liked to think and rethink and that's me, especially with this. I like to think and rethink. I think I'm going to use this Mantis Gray. I really like Mantis Gray. It's really pretty. Kind of a, I would, I would say like a deep slate. Ooh, had a lot of refocusing issues. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There's paint everywhere. Bird with a Brush had a really, really great YouTube video slash stream where she swatched the RVE colors. Um, and she talked a little bit about swatching and how drawing the color out, like drawing it down with a little water, shows you the undertones. It was really cool. I really needed that uh, when I started because I've just sort of realized I used to swatch just totally mass tone, mass whatever. Oh, I've missed seeing you, Bob. Dr. Bob. Um, yeah, it's it's just been crazy. And then uh, this year has been just a super big challenge. So, like, I lost my grandparents, lost my elderly dog, and I had my elderly cat left, and she passed away last Friday. And it has just been, I don't know why, but my boyfriend told me that's going to be the worst. Like, just I just can already tell. Because she had been sick. She had a thyroid problem. She had um, kidney disease. When they caught it, they thought it was early. I really don't know. Because it, um, it just progressed so quickly. But, um, but yeah, he was like, that's going to be the hardest. And you know, it really, really was. And I feel so bad about that. Um, you know, with the dog, I understand because she was my stepdad's dog. It was really sad because he had passed. So it's like you kind of relive that all over again. Um, 
and and with the cat I really tried to dedicate as much of my time to her when I was home as I could because when the dog was sick she just took up so much attention and the cat was so good about it like she wasn't a problem um, that I was like I'm really going to dedicate my effort my energy to this cat and and just 2021 is going to be her year you know so sorry spoons um but um you know she didn't suffer and uh she was uh I think she was turning 17 and the dog would be 18 now she passed a few months ago so it's a kind of empty house sort of strange no more elderlies uh for a while it was like i'm running a old folks home thank you spoons hope we see you later um but yeah so it, it's just been a, a horrible week and uh oh my goodness too much water i really kind of liked the effect this had for a minute for good hot minute Um, oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, it's been a, I mean, it's been a year for everybody, obviously, but, uh, been a year and my boyfriend said something, which is the, just the total opposite of what you should say based on juju. And he's like, well, at least you have a long time to go before you experience loss. And I was like, holy crap, you don't know that. You never say that. It totally reminded me of, um, we have this safety guy that comes in, the safety consultant. His name is Robert and he's wonderful. I love him. But he was doing the safety course and he was talking about um, mass, like surviving a mass shooting, which is, you know, it's high stress. Like if you're really thinking about it, I know a lot of people just kind of go through those safety courses, like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, but he was talking about it and he said, this part you don't really have to worry about because that would never happen here. And I was like, you know, all of this about safety, but nothing about the juju part of safety, which is, oh my God, you don't, you don't say that (laughs) as if it's going to make it happen. Whatever. Uh, no, it was really sweet and, you know, whatever. Statistically, I'm sure he's probably right. And I'm sure he didn't know what to say because, um, but yeah, so it was a week and, uh, picked her up today and she's in a pretty little wooden box, ashes, not, you know, you know, whatever. Uh, oh, Sadie, you should check out Outbreak RPG. It's like The Walking Dead. So I've never, I've never watched The Walking Dead. It's one of those ones I'm sure I will watch eventually. Kind of like, um, kind of like how I just watched The Sopranos a few uh, weeks ago. Um. Yeah. So. Anyway. I might go over. Oh, that was dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I was going to go over the hair with a dark color so I could kind of see the, uh, see the texture. Super unnecessary, and now I've made a mess. I think so, Francis. I'm not sure where, um, today I, I put it on my bed. I was like, I'll just put it right here in my bed. And I've got the single girl bed thing going on. I don't know if you guys have this, but, uh, and I've also read, like, you can tell how healthy you are by how bad it is, but on one side of my bed, I've got all my activities. Like, I'll have my, like, laptop and my notebook and a few pens and whatever, and I sleep on the other side. (laughs) Um, but I don't know. I'm sure I'll find a nice spot. I kind of said today, like, one day I'll have my own place and I'll have a good spot and I'll make a good spot for it. But, 
Oh, the Arcos Hamlet. I love that. My friend has a really pretty bronze cat statue that's an urn. Oh, I love that. This is my first, like, my family just likes to uh, bury the animals on the property. But with my cat, she was, like, mine, like, all mine. And I know I'm moving and I don't want to. But then that makes me sad because I'm like, oh, our dog sister is here. It really doesn't matter. But, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, she's a super sweet cat. Really, really, really nice. Like, let kids hug all over her and uh, and not hurt her. I watched, uh, I feel like, um, I have probably said this before. I feel like kids should be watched more than pets when kids interact with pets because kids usually do more harm. Or start start trouble um, but anyway like they were really sweet kids and she was really sweet to them and um, I might have told this story before but when okay so I got her from a shelter and she was in there with a lot of cats it was in downtown Fort Worth and most of the area shelters only had a few oops a few kittens at the time but this one was just full and my mom found her uh, and we named her Ophelia, but her name was Olivia. And um, so anyway, we went and got her and she was in there with all these cats. And I kind of actually wanted, I've always loved a Siamese. It was one of my first cats was a Siamese, probably my first actually. Um, there was a Siamese adult cat that I wanted to adopt. And I like, you know, when you like almost get your parent to agree to something, but then they don't. Um, I almost got that cat. But anyway, I brought her home. And our dog was so excited. So we put this little kitten on the bed and the dog was like jumping around her, but like not on her. And when she would get too close to the edge of the bed, she'd kind of like swoop and push her closer. Um, so they, they sort of lived really nice parallel lives. They didn't interact too, too much, but they were, they were pretty sweet to each other. Unless the, um, for whatever reason, after the dog had a bath, she would attack the cat. Um, but the crazy thing that happened was that she was in there with all these cats and she got this respiratory infection. So we had her home like maybe a couple days and she got so lethargic and she sneezed like, she would sneeze 20 times in a row. Just ridiculous. And I really didn't think she'd make it. So we took her to the vet and we had to give her this medicine. So... My mom would have to hold her mouth open and my stepdad would give her this medicine and she bit my mom on accident. So my mom goes to the doctor to get a tetanus shot and, you know, they want to know what happened. Oh, our cat bit me, whatever. And they didn't say anything, but at least in Fort Worth, Tarrant County, whatever, maybe in the state, if you get bit by an animal, the animal has to be quarantined. So we get this, we're about to go out of town um, and leave her with family. And we get this little door note that says that we have to quarantine her for 10 days. So we call the, the um, animal services and they say, we will quarantine her for free, but we won't give her her medicine. And we're like, oh my God, she's so sick. She's got to take this medicine. And um, so we had to find a place to quarantine her. We quarantined her. And by the time she got out, like she was just a little kitty when we took her. And by the time she got out, she had like cat hair. So I always kind of joked, like, I don't really know if this is my cat. Um, but it, it was just a whole crazy experience. I mean... Who would, you know, who would have thought until you get bit by a cat that you've got to quarantine your cat? Uh, but anyway, so that was, that's kind of always, my mom was the only person that ever got bit by this cat. Uh, you know what though? I know I've said this before. Uh, kids can be monsters. But I think I've read that relationships with animals are really good 
teachers for relationships with people. So that's sort of the idea behind animal therapy is when you make these bonds and set boundaries with animals, you can learn to make bonds and set boundaries with people. So um, my therapist has a bunch of animals. And when I found that out, I was like, oh, my gosh, betrayal. I've been tricked into being more healthy. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would wonder if kids grow up more kind of sensitive and empathetic if they grow up with animals. And also, um, what do they call it? Neurodivergent. Neurodivergent children, I've heard, are it's also good for them to be around water a lot. I don't know what that's about. You do smaller Sam. Okay, she's got a llama and alpacas and a donkey and cows and chickens and guineas and a bunch of cats that just kind of wander up. And I always joke, these cats must know that they're therapy cats because they're all super sweet and my strays are wild. Um, yeah. So, but really cool. And, uh, it's very, very peaceful place. And I like it. It kind of makes me, um, makes me realize what's important to me. And it's being outdoors and being with animals and having space to kind of just look around the world and be like, yep, that's world. I don't know. Uh, we are doing a free. I don't know what it is, though, Dr. Bob. Kittens that do not receive mother's milk for at least 12 weeks are more aggressive as adults. Wow. That's interesting. I am in a space now where if I adopted a, a dog, I would hope, or a cat, I would hope that it had a mom for longer Okay, so I am using Rugtarki Flesh, Viceroy Crimson, and Plasma Blue to try and make a cool, deep skin tone. Wish me luck. This probably won't turn out that well right away. I've talked about this before, but when I was using an Ebony Flesh, I tried to do the yellow highlight that was popularized a few years ago by Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, um, where it's a yellow kind of triangle. And it ended up really weird and ashy. And Anne told me the reason why was the yellow that I used and how it interacted with ebony flesh. Um, and she gave me an, an example of a good one to use, which I don't remember now. But um, hi, Twisted Oma. Um, but yeah, so anyway, yeah, cat, cat stories, but super sweet cat, hate to see her go, uh, and that's it. I mean, I, I don't know, I posted on Facebook that a few weeks ago I was, uh, I think it's lemon yellow, yes. Yes, Carrie Michael Cosby. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, a few weeks ago, I think it was in December, I was, it's too grayed out. It's kind of purple. So opposite of purple is yellow. So I'm going to add a yellow. And the yellow I'm going to add, I think, is deflector shield. Um talk about these yellows real quick uh, yeah I think this is a well palette that Anne left oh yeah I was gonna use a wet palette I don't know what I was doing I used the primer and the well palette and then I just went for it um so within the RBE set you have a a yellow that's more toward green and a yellow that's more toward orange. I got another one over here. Nope, no, I don't. No, I don't. 
Oh yeah, I'll, I'll show you this too. This is coming up in the Kickstarter if you pledged uh, the level to get the new colors. So this is the yellow oxide, which is a clear bright. Uh, let's see. And how are these different from lantern yellow? Okay, let me think. I think lantern yellow is more clear. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think lantern yellow is more clear than these. This one's more of like a mustardy yellow. And this one is, it's like clear yellow, but is a little higher coverage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so yellow oxide. Um, but this one will generally be more effective in changing something. Like you'll have to add more of the green tone yellow. And then not only that, but if I'm looking at this color in real life, it's sort of got like a gray blue, like sort of a slate appearance. So if I'm picking which way to go on the opposite of this purple, I'm going to go toward the orange side because orange is the opposite of blue. So we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'm just here talking. Okay, neon yellow. Um... Neon yellows in color is a little more green. I've never used neon yellow in practice. But in color, it's a little more green than this. Neon yellow thins a little better. Yes, I, I think that's what it is. So, and then another thing. This is going to get more and more muted because you can't make something brighter by adding different pigments. So I made a, I might've made a gray. Looks like I made a gray, but Hey, Oh, look, if this were how to make a really nice gray, y'all be all set. What I probably did wrong was started with root turkey flesh, which is already too, um, too muted for what I was going for. Nope, 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 nope. That's, that's dubious brown, as Anne was saying. Y'all called it. Uh, Justin is on, um, but Justin is working on something else. Something like we've had this big thing, a big to-do surprise thing. Yeah, shoe brown. Thanks, work rob war brought work robot work that's exactly what it is um and the color is not exactly right so before um i don't know if all of you are in here but we're going we as in me i'm going solo on saturdays from now on so anyway uh we should get used to having no justin uh if he could he'd be engaging today i know but uh, he's so busy getting stuff together. Oh my God. I fight paints work Saturdays. There are parts that are really good about it, but, um, but I hate that I have to, uh, I hate that I can't keep things consistent, but stuff always pops up on, on Thursdays. It always pops up. It's always confusing. It's always, it's too exciting. So Saturdays are going to be nice, going to be chill. We're going to meander through some life lessons. Uh, Ed offered, uh, he said that if I wanted to, I kind of go solo and not do on the Reaper channel. I would rather do on the Reaper channel right now. Uh, I might do other stuff on my own later, but for now I'd like to keep it as, you know, keep it as normal as possible. And um, it'll just sort of be quieter around the shop. So, Sadie days, yeah. Lonely Yeti, I don't know. Uh, um, what time on Saturday? Same time, it'll be at 3. But Justin told me I can go a little longer as long as I kind of keep up viewership. Uh, I can't go for like a marathon and have two people watching. 
yeah i'm still gonna call it painting platinum um i thought about like painting platinum off the grid i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do but uh i'm i'm excited i'm excited to have to have it all be separate when you try and mix something like when you try and mix stuff together too much it it uh loses a lot of a lot of one or the other something's gonna suffer so I think having it separate will be really good on that on, in that sense but I did wonder I was like you know maybe there are people that watch while they're at work or will be at work on Saturdays or whatever um but yeah I think it'll be pretty family friendly I think it'll be a lot more uh painting platinum where we're going we don't need roads oh no Oh, I hate that. I hate that, Dr. Bob. Maybe I can talk to somebody into letting me do an after Reaper Live show every now and again. I don't know. I really don't know. This was just my first solution to, like, this is too much. Um, keeping everything as normal for everybody else as possible. Because when we thought of this, when we started, Anne was still here. Anne was still mixing. Things were different. Uh, it was still disruptive because, sorry, I'm gonna, like, move my feet. I'm sitting on my feet or sitting with my feet or whatever. Um, I was still, like, helping run the machines, so that was sort of disruptive. But other than that, um, maybe we'll just use this as a skin tone and forget, forget what I was going for originally. I hate that I announced that this was going to be a speed paint. Speed paint, speed paint first attempt. Um, but what I will say is that I'd like to try and make it a little more educational. I don't like that. I don't like that. We'll just see how it goes. Uh, we'll see. I don't like this color, but I mean, not that I don't like this color. I don't like this color with the hair. But I'm not married to the hair anyway. Um, anyway. So I want to make it more educational because I'm learning a lot and experimenting with a lot of things lately myself. One being viscosity. For me, this is a speed paint. That's true, Dr. Bob. Yeah, I shouldn't hold myself to other people's standards. I'm starting to like this more. So Rhonda also had a video where she talked about drying shift. I don't think it was the same video. I think it was a different one about color and that you can see color shift dry, uh, shift a little darker most of the time dry. So... I do like this more as it dries. I think it was just a shock because it didn't match the picture in my head. It's too much paint. Okay, and it looks like she's wearing gloves but short sleeves. Francis Monday through Fridays it uh, they're not good they're not good during the day at least it might have to be a night thing or an early morning thing I don't know who knows what the future holds we'll try this for now um the part of me that hates this is the part of me that wants to be really consistent but um what are you gonna do Oh, I just found a mold line. Or 
align. I don't know. I don't know exactly how the Bones USA are made. I think there's molds and casting and whatever because I was experimenting with something that's new and cool and kind of in my realm of things and it looks like it has um because it's just like the first version it looks like it has tear out I think it's called hold on that does not look like an ungloved arm over there maybe she's just really muscular maybe there is a sleeve there So, using this skin tone, we're gonna we're gonna transition back to doing a deep autumn again, which is what we were trying to do on our Sophie. Uh, that's our like color palette. I'll try and ha make a graphic so I can show you guys. It's the kind of thing you always find a lot of on Pinterest, but the characteristics of deep autumn are. Let me see if I remember correctly. Dark and deep in value. And um, lower contrast. Oh my goodness. Sambi did a show on cell shade painting. It made the minis look like from comic books. Oh my god, that's awesome. Well... The only reason I wanted to do that is so I could start on the Pathfinder paints and a different mini on Saturday. But, yeah. So, we'll go for more warm colors in the clothing. Lower contrast. Where I think if I had a winter, I would want to have some brightness in there. Okay, so let's do, hmm, I think there was another Sky Smog. Um, I think I'm going to do a mix of Sky Smog and Roadie Soil for pants. Um, yeah, that sounds really cool. So, yeah. And maybe I'll use some more of that skull and crossbones because I've got a whole uh, little, little lake of it. I saw somebody in the, somebody in the Facebook, whoop, sorry, somebody in the Facebook, Facebook, Facebook group one time said, uh, how do I unclog a paint nipple? And someone else said, squeeze it really hard. <laughs> uh, correct me up. Hmm. Just got a call from a really weird number. Not a number. It has a name on it. I don't know. It's really weird. Real weird. Um, I think this is too green. Like too. Hmm.
Whoa, that's really yellow. Yeah, baby food. Exactly. I think I'm going to go back over this and change the tone a little bit uh, with a wash. Or maybe not. I don't know. These are some yellow pants, though. That's not khaki. That's yellow pants. Uh, yeah, this is an RVE mini. Really neat. I really like these. I picked out a few of them. Um, I picked out one that was like, I don't know what you would call it, like a cyborg lady or a lady in a suit, but it was a little too, um, what do they call like body con? It was just a little too much of that. And um, somebody requested last time seeing some minis that were more kind of covered up. Well, like, okay, I could definitely do that. There's, there's a lot of great minis with robes and clothes. And, um, I really like this one. This one was actually perfect for that because she's, uh, she's at work. She's in action. Got the boots and pockets. You know, ladies love pockets. People love pockets. I did want warm. That's true. Um, let's see. Hunter plays drum. I actually missed most of the stream. What all's been happening? I've announced we're going to start streaming on Saturdays at 3. We are painting this RVE mini. I grabbed it from Rostock, so I don't know its name or number. Uh, but I did not see it on the Bones USA page on our website. So I don't know if it's for sale. Um, oh, Dave Toyer called this, a called those minis heroines in sensible shoes. I like that so much. You know what? Um, hate to bring it back to this, but every, like the ReaperCon live and RVE both, I had a, um, a misfortune and I was pretty out of it. So all weekend, I think Saturday, I can't remember if I came in on Saturday. I think I came in on Saturday and then on Sunday, I, I just had a lot of me time. I hung shelves for my plants and I got new plant. Oh my God, I went plant crazy. I bought plants and pots and plants and soil and, uh, huh. I don't know, Lonely Yeti. I'll have to ask Justin. Oh, it's a line of minis from Oathsborn. I like that. It's a nice genre. Okay, and then I want a white, but an off-white. We'll just use that skull and crossbones because I wanted a nice off-white for the top, for the shirt. And she's got a bandana, which we're all so used to seeing now that we're masked. We are still masked up here at Reaper. Um, I don't know, it's been in the local news, but probably in national news that Texas no longer has a state-mandated mask uh, rule, but private businesses in counties and cities, I think, still do. 
I don't know about Denton, but I know that at Reaper we still wear masks. However, 10 people got vaccinated today at Reaper. They have been, like, I almost don't like to talk about it because I know how hard it is for other people in other states to get vaccinated. And I'm not sure how it broke down this way, if it's just that Texas is so big or if it's that we had such a bad go of it with COVID, like we had so many cases. But, um, but we're getting really close to having, um, like somebody mentioned this week that we could technically have a manager's meeting again if we wanted to, because the managers will all be vaccinated. And as, as uh, my boyfriend read to me after he got his vaccine was, um, we're cleared to, what's it called? Gather individually. And I was like, gather individually? What does that even mean? But I think it means you can go to somebody's house and not wear a mask if you're both vaccinated occasionally and just watch for symptoms. I don't know. This, this stuff is so weird. Oh, congrats, Chef of Love. Um, Yeah. Yes, Denton County is killing it. They are killing it. Uh, Texas doing Group 1C. Yes, so I think they're opening it up to people that are over 50. Um, not over 65? I don't know, 60, 65? Um, and also teachers. So if you didn't qualify before because of a pre-existing condition or comorbidity or age, uh, then you can get it if you're a teacher or if you're over 50 now. So, Sadie for C, oh my god, that'd be a bad job for me. My, my imaginary job is, um, well, it used to be, um, owners, like, just assistant. I wanted to be the assistant slash note taker for everybody. Um, I could see myself doing a HR type situation. So I, I'd be more after uh, the Dave, the Dave job. Though there are a lot of parts of it that are really hard. Um, I don't typically gravitate toward management anyway because I'm silly and when you're silly it's hard to be mm, what's the word it's hard to make an impression I think when you're silly and have I don't know like different mannerisms and stuff yeah official note taker and hype person I'm not authoritative. Uh, I love freedom and autonomy, but not power. I really don't like power. And it drives some people crazy, but I always ask rather than tell people what to do. And if they're still not doing it, I explain to them why we're doing it because... Oh, thanks. Thanks for appreciating my silly... Um, because there are different motivations with people. So I listen to this happiness podcast and also stuff I've learned from adult education in cosmetology, which is that different people do things for different reasons. Some people always want to follow the rules. They're rule followers. They don't want to break the rules. Some people want to do what they need to do if it helps other people. I feel like I'm like that. I am always most accountable when other people are counting on me. Then there are people that don't want to follow the rules because they're rules. Those are rebels. And then there are people, um, and these are kind of my favorite people sometimes, is uh, that follow the rules if you can tell them why. That's a rule. Uh, Sarah was like that. Sarah, uh, John Overton's girlfriend and um, former mixer here. I mean, she's always a mixer. She's an honorary always uh, mixer. Yes. Oh no. Twisted on my, I hate that.
without getting too far down into that, I don't understand it. Uh, I don't understand why we would, why we would do that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, a why person. I, I like a why person because I explain things to death. Maybe that's why I like a why person. I like to see the aha moment. All right. Ooh, I think, I don't know. I'm getting wild with this, but I kind of think I want an orange bandana. I'm trying to think. I might be going too many directions. Maybe a purple bandana. Oh my gosh. So Matthew McConaughey. I love Matthew McConaughey. And what he was talking about in an interview was about Austin and about how um, he really likes cities to have their own vibe. And he likes that New Orleans is not Austin, is not Los Angeles, is not New York City. And that he wants um, these cities to kind of keep their spirit. And he wants people to move to Austin. Um, and if they're not into that spirit, to kind of check out. Like, just make it, what did he say? Make it a a stop, not a stay. Um, so he was doing these interviews as part of a, a book not book tour, but uh, promoting his book. And I got his book on audio because he reads it and I love it. But he is a little word salad-y. He's kind of like, I mean, he's an actor, but I'm like, this guy's just a little nuttier than I thought. Or maybe he had a, a little bit of a time getting started because in the beginning I was like, not sure how much I really, I really like him, but, um, but like his family. So the way he, the way he explained his family. Hey, is, what? Sadie. What? I want to interrupt you for a second and uh, remind both you and chat, uh, there's a zero politics tolerance. I love Matthew McConaughey, and that's fine. We can keep talking about that. But I see all kinds of uh, governor talk and vote and things oh. like that in chat right now. I'm not going to delete any messages, but I just want to warn it there. That's I all. don't think you're watching our chat. I, I am, absolutely. I'm anyway, always here. Let us live. Listen, I, I, it's, not, it's not my rule. Uh, the, the problem is, is, is it, I, I can't allow a little bit. It's one of those, I can't allow an inch because it'll turn into a mile, you know? I, I just ignore it. Okay. Sorry, guys. But anyway, what I was saying is that um, his upbringing actually seemed really kind of weird and abusive. And he kind of jokes about it. Um, and it's sort of sad. I don't know. It just seemed like it was going to be a lot more lighthearted. Um, all of this to say, I would really like to see Matthew McConaughey continue to be the bingo announcer in old folks' homes and the unofficial ambassador to people moving into Austin. I don't think he really needs to get into stuff that he's not already into. Start small. You know what I mean? Uh, it is a good rule. It is a good rule. I just. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's primary purpose really is that, um, it's in all other, reality, it's everyone in chat has a different political view in some way. And as I would love that we could express those things and be cordial to one another, which I actually trust that we probably could with See, this community. It's pretty great. However, um, I don't 
even want to go or the chance of it going awry in chat. So it's really out of respect for literally all political views. Uh, yeah. Um, but we can handle it, guys, because we're a good group. But, um, you know, whatever. I'm with you. Uh, However, I will say, uh, as a side note to what you're talking about, I do love Matthew McConaughey. And that man does love Texas. He does. Yep. And part of what he likes, and this is all I'll say, is the diversity of Texas in our beliefs and how everybody is still really chill with one another. And for the most part, we are. Lonely Yeti says, I want to start a retirement home for old gamers. I want to start that. And also, I want it to have a blockbuster in it. Because I want it to be for my age people. Like, I want it to have a blockbuster and, like, the 90s looking establishments. But, uh... You should just start up Blockbuster again as a company and see if we can yeah. make it succeed this time. Do you know what my plan was recently? And this was during the ice. Um, this is in the kind of realm of elderly people. I wanted to start... Um, a mobile spa situation because like when you're taking care of an elderly person and you work, you're not necessarily going to remember to like trim their nails and do their hair. And sometimes they need a shampoo and you could have a shampoo bowl or, or just, you know, cut their nails and clean them and uh, give them a hand massage, you know? Um, especially in the case of people whose, whose cognitive abilities are kind of declining. And, that what it could do because they're using hairdressers now i might have already talked about this i realize i might have already talked about this but that's okay because i'm going to do it again um they're training hairdressers now in um recognizing human trafficking and it you know it's helping so i was thinking oh my gosh if we did that we could provide kind of a another set of eyes to social workers and to adult protective services and just make sure that uh, elderly people are being loved and respected as they should be. Um, yeah, I love that dress. I like that very much. It will be interesting to see, like, in the same way that... Um, I actually used to have a client and her mom had dementia but still played bridge. Which was fascinating to me. And to see if we're kind of still like that. I wish I would have kept my grandma into video games because uh, it was always a joke in the family that she was playing Ms. Pac-Man one night, um, <laughs> sitting on the floor, kind of like moving around, and it was joystick Ms. Pac-Man, and um, that <laughs> finally she quit playing and her fingers hurt. Um, okay, so Max Styles painting, I think the reason that they're being trained um, to spot human trafficking is because human traffickers will have victims and take them in to get their hair done. Like, to whatever, to do whatever, as I understand it. Um... Yeah, uh, what are you going to do? Um, but I actually read this story on Reddit. It was an Am I the Asshole? And it was this lady who went into a salon with her hearing impaired friend who did not want to tell the stylist for whatever reason that she was hearing impaired. So when the stylist would talk to her, she wouldn't talk back to the stylist and she was, it was obvious that something was going on to the point where it made the stylist uncomfortable because the stylist was communicating with the friend, the person um, accompanying the um, client. So the client and the friend got kind of irritated 
because the stylist was kind of taking their time and making them stay. And the stylist had ended up calling whoever you would call. I don't know, the hotline. And the police had come. And the lady was really mad. She was like, you shouldn't have to tell somebody if you're hearing impaired. Am I the asshole? And people were like, yeah, you're the asshole because that's something you have to look out for. And I had just done my continuing education. And I was like, yeah, if I had a client, um, if I were still doing hair and they weren't speaking for themselves and they seemed standoffish or maybe scared or uncomfortable, I mean, I don't know. It'd be a hard position to be in. Especially because it, it's almost like when you see a kid throwing a fit and not wanting to go somewhere with a parent, part of you is always like, did they know that person? Was that really their parent? Or could they have been getting kidnapped? But there's this like social contract that makes you not want to, um, that makes you not want to make waves in the same way that serial killers have said that when they pick people up, they really want everything to be normal because they just don't want to be, um, whatever. Valander, how dare you? They're real. Uh, what do they call that? Karma farming? Um, yeah, you're probably right. Oh, Nomad Zeke, that's a good idea. They're testing the water uh, for stuff they want to do. I don't know. It was oddly specific. It was good. If not, it was a it was a good one. Um, an educational. I, I would not want to be the one to have to call somebody. Uh, Max Stiles pa- painting, exactly. It's better to be wrong and act than to be right and not, especially if they're teaching us to do it. You know, and just because it was two women doesn't necessarily mean anything. I mean, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, look at, you know, I'm sure this happens all the time, but the one I can think of is Ghislaine Maxwell. You know what I mean? Like, uh, icky stuff. Sucks we have to look out for it. Um, But our intuition is so important. However you think of intuition. I think I was watching a crime show where they were talking about intuition being this, um, this massive just compilation of all the experiences you've ever had and how they compare and what you think is going to happen. So I don't know when you get a vibe, you get a vibe. Oh, I love what's wrong with your cat. I love cats are liquid. Um, Teefies, cats with jobs. Oh, I'll let you know if I have any good ones, Nomad Zeke. You are the great uh, cat subreddit and Facebook group finder. This is what's made me think that I sort of wish there was a dating service for people based on their subreddits of choice. Because I feel like, I feel like that my Reddit is just perfectly, just, just tuned into who I am as a person. And I felt like, man, I bet you could really, because it's kind of anonymous, it can be anonymous. I bet you could um, match people based on that more successfully, I bet, than any other site because those are based on uh, questionnaires and, and polling and, and whatever. And, oh, my God, this cat is grumpy. Oh, I love that. Um, HFY. I don't know what HFY is. I'm not, that's not coming to mind. Um, I like unpopular opinion. Nomad Zeke, I like <laughs> this. This cat is pregnant or whatever. It's like pregnant cats or mom cats. It's cute. Oh, unlikely friends, I think is one. Cats being moms. Animals being animals being moms. I love to see animals being moms. Okay. I really need more colors, I think, or 
maybe not more colors just I need to mix these more thoughtfully I really do think I have a good little starter kit in this RVE um, this RVE set but I don't feel like I've given that hypothesis any judgment or justice but somebody more professional and more talented than I could use this as a really good set uh, did you see the one of someone posted a cat giving a wicked side eye wearing the cone of shame with the caption this feral boy didn't know free porch food would cost his trouble puffs oh I don't know how you even do that because I think you're supposed to let them recover inside and I've thought about it because I've got a feral the property has a feral the feral has me and I thought if they'd make me put them inside him or her they would kill me <laughs> like not into it That is too much paint. I like that. Sounded like a question. Or a surprise. Hmm. Oh, maybe you're right, Dr. Bob. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a picture of this, but I made my cat the feral, not my cat. Um, I took these storage tub containers. Um, I found some because I'm going through my grandparents' house, and I found one that is massive. So, like the biggest storage container I've ever seen, like one of those big plastic tubs. So I take it. And I shove a bunch of blankets in it, and then I shove a smaller one inside of it and put it on the porch for the cat. And he or she did not use it the whole storm until the last day, and it just warmed my heart. I was like, oh my gosh, you're using your little house. You don't know it, but you're my pet now. Like, you're using your little house. But uh, I kind of worry about it because I don't want it. It's not up. And cats, I feel like, need to be up. I live in the country, and I definitely don't want to lure a cat into a, a sitting duck position for coyotes or things. And though coyotes normally don't get that close to my house, uh, I know they did the other day. My uncle told me, I, I didn't experience it, but told me it sounded like they were in the garage. I'm like, oof, get out of here, coyotes. They're so cute, but yeah, they're not great. My cat had a bell because she was killing. I was tired of disposing of her victims. Uh, my house, not my cat. I bet I would. I wonder if I joined that one. I need to do that. <sighs> yeah, big enough for a body. And I actually used it during the ice storm as like a snow collector to melt water for um flushing and uh then my cat wanted some so I got that hot and poured it through a 
a coffee filter and we have well water that's like it doesn't taste bad but it definitely has a taste and my cat was like I don't like this regular water and then whenever we got our water back and I filled it with well water she was like yeah that's the stuff and I was like oh my gosh that's so funny she likes this funky well water and not like water that doesn't taste like weird my mom handles a community of ferals in Detroit, says Chef of Love. They actually found people dumping cats in my mom's neighborhood because she's part of a network that helps cats find homes. I hate that they're dumping them. I love that your mom's there for them. Ugh, mixed feelings. I know a lot of our um, feral groups here, you're supposed to, you're supposed to bring them already spayed or neutered and I know a lot of people can't afford that um, which sucks it's not cheap and then you can do low cost but I don't know Francis I've heard that they like um they like running water yeah I don't know where they come from but I'm by a creek and I feel like people dump cats near the creek Oh, anyway, we should probably do our drawing. Um, I'll see you back here if you're able to on Saturday. We'll kind of see what's going on. And we'll, we'll like uh, I think Francis said, we'll do it as a trial. We'll see how it goes. I mean, we'll figure it out. Uh, this was my idea just to uh, just to get things kind of a little more chill for production just made a little more sense but at the same time we'll just see how it works uh so get your hashtag freeze in i don't know what we're giving away it's a mystery i would imagine it'll be two paints and a pokey tool oh thanks francis i love that about you and i plan on doing more during the week i just want to do it when i can be consistent so um so that's my plan i have a lot of plans um I want to do a crime one where we paint and talk about crime, but I don't want to do that on the Reaper, uh, Reaper channel because it could be offensive, it can be troublesome. Anyway, but thanks for joining us. Have a lot of fun. Justin will be back soon. He can. I have us. our two winners. We got two winners. Our two winners are. Carrie Michael Cosby and Clover 3368. Oh, congrats, you guys. That's awesome. So, uh, did we change the exclamation point, I want something, question mark? Uh, no, we did not. Okay, good. Then uh, somebody can type exclamation point, I want something, question mark, and it'll give you all the instructions. Oh, uh, well, we will see you next time, LGBT, LGBT Pride uh, 02. We'll be back at 6 p.m. for Reaper Live, and I will be back, barring any unforeseen technical issues, I'll be back here uh, this Saturday at 3 p.m. It's all part of my evil plan to get two in one week. So, congrats, you guys. Uh, we'll see you later. We love you. Be safe. Uh, have fun. Yes, yeah, six PM ish is perfectly. That that's that describes it. So. But uh, we won't have John tonight. Um, so it'll just be, I think, four of yeah, the four of you. It'll be you, Ed, Dave, and Ron. Fab four. All right. Thank you guys very much. You've been awesome as always. Killed it. And we'll see you guys tonight. See you later. Bye.